This lesson will help you learn and understand the different health-related fitness and skill-related fitness components. This is designed to help you clearly identify the different abilities of the body in order for you to be physically fit. You are considered physically fit whenever you can do series of physical activities without being or feeling tired. Through this lesson, you will also deeply learn the value of eating well and how it affects the entire system of your body. Come on! Let us start your physical activity track. Physical fitness as defined a person who is free from illnesses and can do physical or sports activities and still has an extra energy to do more activities is considered to be physically fit. Physical fitness is a combination of health fitness and body fitness. Health fitness refers to your body's ability to fight off diseases. Body fitness, on the other hand, is refers to the ability to do strenuous physical or sports activities without getting tired easily. It is not enough for someone to only look good and feel good in order to be called physically fit. An individual should also take into consideration his kind of lifestyle including the food he takes every day because it can lead him to better health. Health-related fitness, this is primarily associated with disease prevention and functional health participating in regular health-related fitness helps you control your weight, prevents diseases and illness, improves mood, boosts energy and promotes better sleep. Health-related fitness components One body composition, the combination of all the tissues that make up the body such as bones, muscles, organs and body fat. 2. Cardiovascular endurance The ability of the heart, lungs, blood vessels, and blood to work efficiently and to supply the body with oxygen. 3. Flexibility The ability to use your joints fully through a wide range of motion. 4. Muscular endurance The ability to use muscles for a long period of time without tiring. 5. Muscular strength The ability of the muscles to lift a heavy weight or exert a lot of force one time. Physical activity and exercise. Activities done by the skeletal muscles that utilize energy is called physical activity. Activities you are doing at home or in school are considered to be physical activity. It is classified into four domains, occupational, domestic, transportation, and leisure time. Occupational, these are the activities you do at your workplace. Lifting computers and books, going your friend's desk or preparing lunch at the pantry. Domestic, these are the activities you do at home. Washing clothes and dishes, gardening, carpentry, baking or cleaning the house. Transportation, these are the activities that involves traveling. Riding a jeepney, tricycle, motorcycle, or bike. Leisure time, these are the activities you do during recreational activities. Playing, swimming, hiking, or craft making. Exercise, according to a study by Buckworth and Dishman, is the planned, structured, repetitive bodily movements that someone engages in for the purpose of improving or maintaining physical fitness or health. Aerobic, aerobic activities, also called endurance activities, are physical activities in which people move their large muscles in a rhythmic manner for a sustained period. Muscle strengthening activity, this kind of activity, which includes resistance training and lifting weights, causes the body's muscles to work or hold against an applied force or weight. Bone strengthening activity, this kind of activity, sometimes called weight-bearing or weight-loading activity, produces a force on the bones that promotes bone growth and strength. Barriers to physical activities We understand the benefits of physical activities to our health, especially our body, but there are circumstances when we become lazy in performing physical activities. Below are some of the barriers that hinder us to do physical activities. First, lack of time. Second, social support. Third, lack of energy. Fourth, lack of motivation. Fifth, fear of injury. Sixth, lack of skill. Seventh, 
high costs and lack of facilities. 8. Weather conditions. Eating habits, the term eating habits, or food habits, refers to why and how people eat, which foods they eat, and with whom they eat, as well as, as, well the, as the ways people obtain, store, use, and discard food. Individual, social, cultural, religious, economic, environmental, and political factors all influence people's eating habits. Improving your eating habits When it comes to eating, we have strong habits. Some are good, I always eat breakfast, and some are not so good, I always clean my plate. Although many of our eating habits were established during childhood, it doesn't mean it's too late to change them. Permanently, improving your eating habits requires a thoughtful approach in which you reflect, replace, and reinforce. Reflect on all of your specific eating habits, both bad and good, and your common triggers for unhealthy eating. Replace your unhealthy eating habits with healthier ones. Reinforce your new, healthier eating habits. Body composition is the body's relative amount of fat to fat free mass. Body Mass Index BMI. Formula for computing body mass index Weight, in kilogram, divided by height, in meters, multiply by 2 Classification Below 18.5, is underweight 18.5 to 24.9, is normal 25.0 to 29.9, is overweight 30.0 to above, is obese. Weight Refers to the, the heaviness of a person. Equipment Weighing or bathroom scale calibrated properly. Procedure For the tester A. Wear light clothing before weighing. B. On bare feet, stand erect, and still with weight evenly distributed on the center of the scale for the partner a before the start of weighing adjust the scale to zero b record the score in kilogram scoring record the body mass to the nearest 0.5 kilogram Height is the distance between the feet on the floor, to the top of the head, in standing position. Equipment A. Tape measure laid flat to a concrete wall where zero point starts on the floor. B. L square C. An even and firm floor and flat wall. Procedure for the tester a stand erect on bare feet with heels buttocks and shoulders pressed against the wall where tape measure is attached for the partner a place the l square against the wall with the base at the top of the head of the person being tested make sure that the l square when placed on the head of the student is straight and parallel to the floor b record the score in meters Scoring. Record the standing height to the nearest 0.1 cm, multiply by 1 meter, equals to 100 cm. Flexibility. Is the ability of the joints and muscles to move through its full range of motion. Zipper test. Purpose to test the flexibility of the shoulder girdle. Equipment A. Ruler Procedure For the tester A. 
stand erect. B. Raise your right arm, bend your elbow, and reach your back as far as possible, to test the right shoulder, extend your left arm down and behind your back, bend your elbow up across your back, and try to reach or across your fingers over those of your right hand, as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. C. To test the left shoulder, repeat the procedures. A and B. With left hand over the shoulder. For the partner. A. Observe whether the finger touched or overlapped each other, if not, measure the gap between the middle fingers of both hands. B. Record distance in centimeter. Scoring. Record zipper test to the nearest 0.1 centimeter. Score. 5 points if the fingers overlapped by 6 centimeters and above is excellent. 4 points if the fingers overlapped by 4 to 5.9 centimeters is very good. 3 points if the finger overlapped by 2 to 3.9 is good. 2 points if the fingers overlapped by 0.1 to 1.9 cm is fair. 1 points if only touched the fingers is needs improvement. 0 points gap of 0.1 or wider is poor. Cardiovascular Endurance Cardiovascular is the ability of the heart, lungs, and blood vessels to deliver oxygen to working muscles and tissues, as well as the ability of those muscles and tissues to utilize the oxygen. Endurance Endurance may also refer to the ability of the muscles to do repeated work without fatigue. 3-Minute Step Test The purpose of 3-Minute Step Test is to measure cardiovascular endurance. What are the equipment in 3-Minute Step Test? First, Step. The height of the step should be 12 inches. Second. Stopwatch. Third. Drum, clapper, clicker, metronome with speaker or any similar device. Procedure for the tester. First. Stand at least one foot away from the step or bench with trunk erect and eyes looking straight ahead. Second. The first step of the sequence should be alternate. At the signal go. Step up and down the step or bench for 3 minutes at a rate of 96 beats per minute. One step consists or 4 beats, up with the left foot, count 1, up with the right foot, count 2, down with the left foot, count 3, down with the right foot, count 4, for the first sequence. Then up with the right foot, count 1, up with the left foot, count 2, then down with the right foot, count 3. Down with the left foot, count 4, for the second sequence. Observe proper breathing. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Immediately after the exercise, stand and locate your pulse and in 5 seconds, at a signal, start to get the heart rate. Third. Don't talk while taking the pulse rate. Fourth. Count the pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. Procedure for the partner. First. As the student assumes the position in front of the step, signal ready and go, start the stopwatch for the 3-minute step test. Second. After the test, allow performer to locate his or her pulse in 5 seconds. C. Give the signal to count the pulse beat it by 6. D. Let the performer count his or her pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiple. Scoring. Record the 60-second heart rate after the activity. Strength is the ability of the muscles to generate force against physical objects. Push-up. What is the purpose of push-up? Purpose to measure strength of the upper extremities equipment first. Exercise mats or any clean mat. Procedure for the tester. First. Lie down on the mat, face down in standard push-up position, palms on the mat about shoulder width, fingers pointing forward, and legs straight, parallel, and slightly apart, with the toes supporting the feet. Second. For boys, straighten the arms, keeping the back and knees straight, then lower the arms until there is a 90 degree at the elbows, upper arms are parallel to the floor. For girls, with knees in contact with the floor, straightens the arms, keeping the back straight, 
then lowers the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows, upper arms are parallel to the floor. Third, perform as many repetitions as possible, maintaining a cadence of 20 push-up per minute. 2 seconds going down and 1 SEC going up. Fourth, a maximum of 50 push-up for boys and 25 push-up for girls. For the partner, first, as the tester assumes the position of push-up, start counting as the tester lower his or her body until he or she reaches 90 degree at the elbow. The partner should stand in front of the tester and his or her eyes should be close to elbow level to accurately judge the 90 degrees bend. Second, make sure that the performer executes the push-up in the correct form. Third, the test is terminated when the performer can no longer execute the push-up in the correct form, is in pain voluntarily stops, or cadence is broken. How to score push-up? The performer will get 5 points of score. If he or she got standard score of push-up 33 and above, which is equivalent to excellent. 4 points of score for those who got 25 to 32 standard which is equivalent to very good. 3 points for 17 to 24 standard which is equivalent to good. 2 points for 9 to 16 standard which is equivalent to fair. 1 for those who got 1 to 8 which is equivalent to needs and improvement. And 0 for cannot execute which is equivalent to poor.